has a thing for me? What exactly is this thing you're referring to? Oh, I see. Keep it light and maybe she'll stop asking all these questions. Sorry, Ridge, but that just won't work. You and Morgan seem to have a lot of chemistry together. So do you and I. Does that keep us from working together? Well, it almost kept you and Morgan from working together. You know, she fought me tooth and nail not to make her go on this trip with you. Is that a fact? So, tell me about Paris. Oh, mission accomplished, more or less. Still a lot of design work to do, though. And why didn't you get it all done? Project was a lot bigger than we thought. Was it really? Or were there just other things to occupy your time? I understand that you and Morgan shared a suite. Morgan, welcome home. I imagine you're glad to be back. Oh, yeah, it, it was pretty exhausting. <laughs> well, I hope you had a little time to enjoy Paris. Did Ridge show you around at all or anything? No, no, we didn't have any time. <laughs> you worked the whole time? Yeah, and, and we talked a lot. I've come to a conclusion. You did. There's something I have to share with you, Taylor. I just found a couple more bolts of fabric in the store line. So, how's the stomach problem? It's much better. Yeah? Yeah. Um, oh, look what I've been doing. I've attached all the fabric samples to the designs that Ridge and Morgan brought back from Paris. I, I cross-checked with the original designs. I hope that's okay. Well, you just put me ahead of schedule. I would say that is really okay. I guess you're not that sick after all. Oh, there's not much that can keep me down. <laughs> well, the power of love, it can even take away the aches and the pains. Just about. You're doing great, Becky. Thanks. I wish there was something I could do for Becky. You can. <sighs> Please don't tell anyone about this. Amber, I, I... I don't think I agree with you about that. <sighs> Mrs. Forrester, if Becky knows that she's dying, it changes everything. All of the happiness and the joy, it's just gone instantly in her life. Instead, it just it becomes a date with death. All she'll think about, you know it. But Amber, a person has a right to know if they only have a few months left to live. I mean, wouldn't you want to? Not if I was living in the dream life Becky is. She, she has everything that she's ever wanted out of life. She has a wonderful boyfriend, a beautiful son, a terrific job. She is happier than she's ever been. And I can't take that away from her. Not yet. I won't do that to my cousin. But I'm asking you. I'm begging you. Please don't do it either.
You're amazing, kiddo. There's not one mistake. Well, you don't pay me to make mistakes, Mr. Forrester. You think you could call me Thorn? Okay. Thorn it is. Thank you. I mean, we could be related before long anyway. Related? As in brother and sister-in-law? I think CJ and I are a little too young for that. <laughs> oh, well, I'm not talking about next week. Oh, would be nice, though, wouldn't it? Oops, did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're a much-needed breath of fresh air in this place, Becky. Thanks. <laughs> take these over to my mom at the house, and then I want you to take the rest of the day off, okay? Okay, you got it, Miss Thorne. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I don't have the right to ask you any favors, and I've basically burned my bridges with you. I, I realize that. And you probably think this is very selfish of me to be acting this way because of, of how selfish I was with Rick, but, but it isn't. No, no, listen. I'm never going to be happy about what happened with you and Rick and the baby. But one thing has nothing to do with the other. I don't think you're being selfish at all. If anything, I think you're being totally unselfish and extremely compassionate. But Amber, this goes against all of my instincts. Listen to me when I tell you, a person needs time. They need time to prepare themselves if they're going to die. This is honestly for the first time in all of the years I've known my cousin. And she's actually looking at life positively. It would destroy her to know that it's only going to last a few more months. And she wouldn't prepare to die. She would just go into a deep, dark depression. And what would that do to the baby, huh? Amber, I don't know what it would do to the baby to lose his mother, but that isn't really the point no. about this. No, no. He hasn't lost her yet. But he will. The minute we tell her she's dying, Something you want to share with me? Yes. About Paris? Well, as I said, you know, Ridge and I did a lot of talking, you know, and we discussed things that we'd never discussed before. And, well, I had this sort of epiphany. I, I, I learned so much about myself. What in the world did you talk about? <laughs> I talked about you and him and his life and my life, and I realized he's matured in so many ways, in ways I wish I had matured. And Taylor, that is because of you and your children. Yeah, well, you know, children do have a way of grounding you, Morgan. You know, they, they teach you a reverence for life. Not just your life, but all life. You know, I can't think of a, a better way to help someone appreciate that than finding your soulmate and having a child. I know. That's why I want to have one of my own. Well, I'm sure someday you will. No, Taylor, I want to have one now, not someday. You see, that's the realization that I had when we were in Paris. I want to have a child, and I want to have it as soon as I possibly can. Yes, Morgan and I shared a hotel suite. That's all that was available. And it was very convenient, seeing as how much work we had to do. Which you didn't get done, by your own admission. Oh, come on, Ridge. There must have been more to sharing that hotel suite than your busy schedule. Why don't you just tell me what happened over there? Logan, you are something else. Gossip does not become you. Oh. So there is something to gossip about. Oh, you cut it out. This isn't funny anymore. No, I'm sure it isn't. You have a wife and three children. I'm sure you're going through a lot of conflict right now. Why, because of an old girlfriend? No. No conflict here at all. Oh, come on, Ridge. I know that she was important to you. 
The look on her face when I told her that she had to go on a trip with you is all I needed to see. Now, I'm going to get the truth, either from you or from Morgan. And if you don't give it to me, I certainly will get it from her because I'm darn sure that she needs a friend to talk to Okay, about will you right just now. stop? This is none of your business. Oh, you just cinched it for me. Thank you very much. So, what's the story? And don't tell me there isn't one because I'm dead sure there is. Okay, what do you want me to say? Do you want me to tell you that Morgan and I have some flaming affair going on? Is that what you'd like to hear, huh? You two are my top designers here, and I have a right to know if you have a personal relationship going on. I sent you over there to deal with a crisis. And we dealt with it. Wow, Ridge, I'm not out to get you. I just need to know what's going on here. Now, I know that you had something going on with Morgan, and now she's back. And judging from Stephanie's reaction, and yours, and Morgan's, I can tell that there's more than just a thin thread holding you two together. Now, what is it? Tell me, Rich, tell me what it is. It's nothing that concerns you or anyone else, Brooke. And that's all I'm gonna say about it. So please, don't ask me about it again, okay? Fine, good. I always liked Becky. From the very first time I met her, I thought she was an extremely appealing young girl. She has a good heart. She does. And she certainly loves that baby. I wish I was half the mom Becky is. You weren't bad. Thanks. But I don't agree with you. I don't agree about keeping the truth from her. Becky is stronger than you think she is. This isn't whether or not Becky can handle the truth. It's about the quality of her life from now until the day she dies. But her quality of life is going to take on a whole different framework, Amber. Look, you're talking about, you know, the immediacy of happiness and a boyfriend and a good job. And those are wonderful things for a person whose life isn't threatened by a terminal illness. But the doctors have told you she's dying. And I believe that a dying person takes on a different set of priorities. The stuff that, the everyday stuff that you and I think about, that's not what she should be focused on. She needs to set her house in order. And she needs to make peace with herself about what's coming. She has made her peace. With CJ. See, Becky has never been loved before. Do you realize that she's in pain half the time and she doesn't even know it? Do you honestly think that that telling her that would, would make her life better? Would give her more peace? Becky. Hello, Miss Forrester. Um, Thorne asked me to drop this by for you. Oh, uh, thank you. How are you doing? I'm fine. Well, you look great. I, I'm assuming you're feeling better? I'm getting there. It may sound kind of crazy, but I do worry about you. Me? Oh, my son. You're one of those people I want him to have around his whole life. Why do you say something like that? Because you have so much class and wisdom. And I know that you love little Eric. I, I guess I'm just trying to let you know that I respect you, Mrs. Forrester. And I want someone like you around my son forever. Well, thank you. Come in. Amber? You want to have a baby as soon as you possibly can? Yes. Yes, it just hit me when I was on the plane in Ridge. He showed me the pictures of your children. And I realized that 
I have for years been living this completely empty existence. I mean, yes, yes, I've been very successful and I have a great career, but, you know, I, I'm really not happy. In fact, I'm quite miserable. Morgan, it doesn't sound like you need a child. It sounds like you need a man. No, I, I've dated and I've been looking for Mr. Wright my whole entire life and he's just not out there. I have thought about this for a long time and I am absolutely certain that the answer to my loneliness would be to have a child. Yes, but to have a child, you need a man first. Unless you were thinking of adopting. No, no. You see, I want a newborn baby. I want to carry it for nine months and I want to give birth. How are you going to do that? Oh, I'll find a way. I mean, I will. I am going to do this. I've made up my mind, Taylor. This is what I'm going to do. I mean, every night I go home and I have to face my empty hotel room and my loneliness and my destiny. And I just can't do it anymore. You see, I won't be satisfied until I get what I need. <laughs> and what I need is a child. I look at Rich, the man I used to be in love with, and I see that he's got a beautiful wife and three beautiful children. And what have I got? I've got nothing. And Rich, he's, he's grown and he's built this whole life for him. And what have I done? I've treaded water at best. Taylor, I can't tell you how unsatisfied I am. I'm, I'm practically sleepwalking. Taylor, I need you to help me do this, please. I need a child. Please help me. Morgan, of course I will. I will. I'll help you in any way I can. I mean, Rich and I will be there for you. We'll help you. Hi, Becky. Amber, what are you doing here? I wanted to talk to Mrs. Forrester. What about? No, don't tell me. I'm just so happy to see you t Everything's okay. Oh, yes. <laughs> we had a long, much overdue conversation. Oh, that is great. Oh, that is so wonderful. This is the best news. Is that my little bug? Huh? Isn't that wonderful? Come here, Eric. Oh. Grandma Forrester and Amber had a nice long talk. Yeah. I am so thrilled. I am so incredibly happy. You know, I thought my life was perfect, but I was wrong. This is what it needed for you two to finally patch up your differences. You didn't have to really worry about us. I think it was just a matter of time. Well, time has a way of getting away from us. I mean, days become months, months become years. <sighs> Ever since I've been dating CJ, did Amber tell you? Well, I've just started to realize how precious every moment is. Every breath, really. I'm so incredibly happy, Mrs. Forrester. I wake up every morning and it's like I'm in heaven. I just couldn't imagine it getting it any better. But today it did. When I walked in here and saw you two together, it was, it was hallelujah. <laughs> Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Mm.